Hi everyone, Dr. Emi from Pain Free and Fit. Today we've got a top exercise for spondylolisthesis at L4-5 and L5-S1 known as the Flying V Reverse Hyper. Hope you enjoy. So the Flying V Reverse Hyper is one of the top exercises for spondylolisthesis at L4-5 and L5-S1 because it addresses two of the main mechanical components that aggravate spondylolisthesis pain. Namely, an increased arch or an overextension of the lower back. Many patients with spondylolisthesis have this tendency because of weak abdominal muscles, overactive lower back muscles, weak gluteal or buttock muscles, and that muscular imbalance allows the pubic bone to drop down lower than the tailbone, which under normal standing positions should be level. This creates an overarching in the back and creates an extension compression on the back of the facet joints in the back and compression of the posterior back portion of the disc fibers, often leading to pain and helping to drive that spondylolisthesis vertebra more forward or causing more of a slip in terms of its mechanical compressive effects on the vertebra. The second issue that this great exercise does is it addresses the tendency of an imbalance between the hip adductor, the muscles on the inside of your thigh, and the hip abductor muscles. Many clients and patients with spondylolisthesis have underactive hip abductor muscles, weakness in their outer hip muscles, and overactivity and tightness on the hip adductors, which attach from the inner thigh into the pubic bone. When these tight hip adductor muscles become tight over a prolonged period, they cause more of a lowering of the pubic bone and increase in the arch in the back, aggravating that spondylolisthesis pain. So, to address the, both of these components with this exercise, we're going to set ourselves up so that our pubic bone is just on the flat part of an exercise bench, not on the very edge so that you're comfortable, with the legs hanging off. If you don't have an exercise bench, this can be done at home on a bed or a couch if you have enough area. You want to make sure that as you hold on for support, you engage your RPI. Now, for those of you who have not taken any of our videos before, RPI, reverse posture isometric, is the key component to any type of healing exercise. It's the reverse of your normal, typical movement tendencies, posture tendencies, joint stability issues. If you're not sure what that is, go to the posture size of the painfreeandfit.com website. We have a free body analysis to check out your posture, your movement tendencies, joint stabilizations like the multifidus muscles, the internal and external obliques, the quadratus lumborum, the lat. You need to know how to engage all of these muscles uniquely for your body and your unique situation. Otherwise, just doing a generic version of this exercise many times will strengthen the already out of kilter or muscle imbalance issues in your body and it will actually lead to, lead to more spondylolisthesis pain. So you gotta have your posture set, you gotta be neutral, and you gotta avoid those tendencies that we all have with any type of musculoskeletal pain by engaging your RPI. Once that's engaged, we're going to take our tailbone and we're gonna tuck it slightly under, again to a neutral spine position. That's halfway between the amount of tail up movement it takes to feel lower back discomfort and the amount of tail under movement it takes to feel lower back discomfort. You're gonna place it right in the midpoint or halfway mark between those two. As you do that, you're going to then retense the tailbone moving back upwards, like you're about to try to arch your back. Even though you put the tailbone under at the beginning and you hold it there to open up the back of the vertebra and avoid that arch in your back and compression, you want to tense without moving the tailbone back upwards to engage those long fibers of the longissimus and the iliocostalis muscles in your lower back that attach to L4-5 and L5-S1, creating a backwards pull and a stability force so that vertebra doesn't have a tendency to slip forward. So what we have here is a co-contraction of back muscles and abdominal muscles. As you tuck your tail under that midpoint, you're gonna feel your abs tensing in the front, just above your pubic bone. As you retense the tailbone up without moving it up, you're gonna feel your back muscles. So you have tension both on the front and back of your body. From that position, you're going to raise your legs upwards and outwards. That's the flying V. Now as you do this, at the beginning, you can take one hand and place it on your lower back because as the legs come up, if they come up too high, you're gonna feel an overarching of your back. That's gonna aggravate your spondylo. The purpose of this exercise is to engage your gluteal muscles, both the buttock as an extensor of the hip and the glute medius on the outside of the hip that's an abductor 
to relax the typical tightness on the front of the body. Many times the hip flexors are tight and the hip adductors are tight as we've just discussed that cause spondylolisthesis pain. So with RPI engaged, maintaining that tail under position with tension up, legs come up and out to a comfortable degree, not arching the back, hold for a few seconds, and then put down again. So this is about the speed that you'll perform this exercise. As you come up, you're maintaining that tail under tension, making sure you're not aggravating or increasing the arch in the lower back. Sometimes the motion can just be an inch or two up. It doesn't have to be several inches. Whatever your body's able to do is the way to start this exercise. The knees remain straight. So as the legs are coming up, you're emphasizing tail under to get more buttock tension and lower back tension, and your legs are going apart to engage those outer hip muscles, which reflexively relax or inhibit the inner tight hip adductor muscles. And you can do this exercise starting out for five to 10 repetitions, but over time you can build this up to 50 reps, even 100 reps, which will really help to increase abdominal tension and strength, coordination of the hip muscles, help to increase the strength and recruitment of the buttock and hip adductor, abductor muscles, and release the tension on the hip adductor muscles. Many times after this exercise, you'll actually feel better in your lower back because you'll get a pump or a muscular feeling of tightness in the hip muscles. A final thought to think about when you're raising the legs up is most people have a tendency to externally rotate one leg more than another, meaning they stand or walk with one foot turned out, for instance, my right one. If that's the case, as you're raising your legs with this exercise, make sure you're keeping that leg slightly turned in to help with the hip correction, avoiding excessive external rotation. That will help to bring balance to your hip musculature and decrease the actual forces that go across your lower back in an asymmetrical way. If you like this exercise, the Flying V Reverse Hyper, feel free to subscribe to our channel. We've got a lot of great videos, exercises out there for spondylolisthesis. Questions or comments, write in. I'll do my best to answer them. And as always, if you're looking for a customized program to deal with your mechanical issues that are causing your spondylolisthesis pain, learn how to condition your body to better support and stabilize your vertebra, spinal stabilization, look no further than our fast course, fast track, healing program for spondylolisthesis available at the painfreeandfit.com website. It takes into account all of the body analysis you need, all the stretches that are required, all the stabilization exercises, strengthening, coordination exercises, endurance exercises, how to lift, how to bend, all to protect your spondylo, uniquely designed for your unique mechanical issues. That's a great program, the Fast Track, and of course, if you want me to personally design your Fast Track program, that's available too. You can just go to the painfreeandfit.com website and contact me. I'd be delighted to get along with you with a video conferencing session and figure out what mechanical issues are disturbing your pain. And let's design a great workout program to help you stabilize your spinal thesis at L5-4 and L5-S1.